Personal notice changes my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Cause for Thanksgiving, another adventure of George Valentine. Mr. Valentine. What? Hello. Quiet. I'm ten years old. Lieutenant Riley, is that you? Well, it's not Tom Turkey. Listen, my friend. You sure it's not? What's that ten year old stuff? Hey, you've been jumping the gun on the cranberry sauce. All right, all right, all right. I'll say it straight. I'm phoning on behalf of a little boy ten years old. Well, that's better. No, it's not. It's worse. Said little boy could no more write you a letter than he could hope to choke. I doubt if he can write. What's the matter? He can't talk either. Huh? You heard me. I said he can't talk. Oh, I don't mean there's anything wrong with him, or maybe there is. I don't know, but... Look, Valentine, get over here. Will you right away to my house? Well, sure. But I warn you, friend, this little boy never heard of Thanksgiving. If you're going to help him, you'd better bring your brass knuckles. Lieutenant. Oh, Mrs. Riley's got him in there trying to coax him to eat. But the only time he'll take a bite is when she's turned her back. Oh, is he? Where'd you get him? <sighs> One of the boys in my department picked him up early this morning at 3 a.m. on the waterfront, the warehouse lane. Oh, I see. A little on the tough side, huh? Oh, they all are down there, like a bunch of dirty seagulls and scavengers running loose. We can't even find out who he belongs to. Maybe nobody. And only ten years old. Listen... This sergeant of mine in a squad car nearly runs him down. See, the kid was racing across the empty street, not even looking. Well, Mike gets out to help, naturally. The kid wasn't hurt, but he swung on him. He tried to get away, scared to death, and clawed and scratched. And then Mike realized the kid wasn't talking. Not a sound. Now, that's the part I don't get. Clear it up, will you, Riley? Well, Mike couldn't even find out where he lives, so he brought him in. My friends, that boy hasn't spoken one single solitary word since. Hardly a noise out of him. Oh, except maybe to cry a little. Only he stops that when you look at him. But, Lieutenant, he's probably a mute. Oh, two doctors were out from juvenile hall to look at him. One of them said the kid's faking, but they both agree there's nothing wrong with his vocal cords. What's the other doctor say? <sighs> Psychic shock. Oh, you mean he can't talk because of something that happened to well, him? Well, they're not sure... They say it'll take time to be sure. I've arranged for the hall to take him over to try to find his family, if there is one, to feed him and... But that takes time, like you say, days, weeks. Now, now you get it, pal. And the doc says it'll help him a lot better if we could work fast. Because the most likely thing is that last night he saw something. Was mixed up in something that scared the blue blazers out of him and he was running away. A little before 3 a.m. last night, I huh? saw something. Yeah, but what... Nothing happened down there. Nothing was reported. My department can't just go shh, bursting shh, into a... Shh, shh. Huh? Well, hello there, Sally. Hello. You finally ate something, did you? Such big eyes. He listens, but he doesn't listen. Yeah. Uh, come on in here, son. Come on. These are friends of mine, see? Ah, now, wait a minute. Don't jump like that. I'm not going to bite you. Come on in here Stephen and... Riley. What time is it? Huh? Um, 1.45, George. Oh, good. Hey, uh, look, kid, uh, how about coming with me? I've got an extra ticket to the big football game. Well, get you to meet Big Mike Marilevsky, the All-American. Maybe you can even sit on the bench with the team, oh, huh? George, he's just more frightened. He's crying. Hey, you see? You can't get him interested in anything. But a boy in a football game... I think the doctors are... Oh, it's Thanksgiving. I mean, a kid belongs in somebody's home on Thanksgiving. 
Well, are you going to just sit there, Valentine? I know, Softy. I know. We've got work to do and fast. Come on, Brooksy. Take the kid's hand. We're going to go straight at this. At the waterfront. <laughs> Plenty of freighters tied up, but no people. Ship chandlers. You must have spent some time around there, haven't you, kid? How about the candy store? You're wasting your time, George. It just seems to get more and more tense. Yeah. Well, this is where he was picked up, right here. Oh, relax, honey. Don't just sit there Running and look... from right to left, so he must have come from this way. Okay, let's move on a little. Cobblestones by the empty warehouse, huh? George, look at him. This direction, all right. George, look out for that boy in the street. He's driving on the right side of the street, Jack Nelson. Oh, lovely neighborhood. I wonder if that boy would know anything about our friend here. Hey, that's an idea. Wait a second. Hey, you, Shorty. Oh, you want to argue about it? Yeah, Jack Nelson. Come here, you. Hey, let go of me. Hey, 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 Shorty. Shorty, wait. George. George, come here. I'm having an awful time holding. Oh, look, kid. Kid, stop it, will you? He wants to run, too, George. Yeah, now easy. That's better. Yeah, he'll get away from us if I try to catch up with that shorty. Look, Brooksy, look. There's a settlement house over there at Murphy's. You know him. Take the kid over there and wait for me, will you? Oh, sure, George. Maybe they'll know something about it. I doubt it. 3 a.m. last night. But farther out there on the pier is where it happened, whatever it was. So me, I'm going to take it on foot by myself. Shorty, I got you this time. Get your paws off your nose. Cut it out. Get your... Cut it out. I just want to ask you something. Ah. You know that other kid I had back in the car there? You know his name? i never seen him before. I ain't done nothing. What's your name? I don't know. Let go. You kids running loose out here by the ships last night? I was up on the moon eating cheese. Let me go. Oh, brother. Great tribe, aren't you? Stick together. Never tell anybody anything. Oh, now, look, kid, I'm not a cop or anything. I just want to Hang find... Hang on to him. Hang on to him, man. Don't let him loose. Ah. Sure. No. Oh, no, you don't, shorty. I got you. Hey, don't let him loose. Ah. There we are. Hold him and let me go through his pockets. Hey, hey, wait a minute there, Skipper. What are you talking Box about? Box of cigars. Left him out on deck. Stolen. Stolen. Fine and still He hasn't some... got anything. No. No, he's too big anyway. You're not the one. Not What? Come on, Shorty, get out of here. You're no help. <laughs> I told you, jerk nose. Yeah. Water rats. Same the world all over. All the same. Good cigars, too. First mate, give them to me, so I let him stay uptown. Wait a minute, Skipper. Wait a minute. Were you looking for another kid? No. Uh, yes. Something stolen last night, you mean, huh? During the night? Cigars? No, no. This afternoon, a few minutes ago. Come up like... Like rats open the horses. I tell you, it's awful. Marseille, it was my last port. Same thing, same the world over. Nobody stops them, nobody can stop them. Ah, kids. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Skipper. This your ship tied up here? Yeah, leaky old tub full of potatoes. Frenchmen like potatoes. Uh-huh. Looks about ready to sail. Uh, were you here last night? Uh, what are you peddling? Dope, punch boards, cheap liquor? No, no, listen, will you? You have trouble with kids getting aboard, huh? Characters like you in every port, too. Dock loafers always got a deal. <laughs> sure, I have trouble. That's the customs, pier watchmen. Nobody can stop them. You see those big rat guards? Right over them, like monkeys. Uh-huh. Uh, did some kids get aboard your ship last night? No, no. Now, stop pestering me. Are you sure? Around 3 a.m.? fight was on the pier, not the ship. What fight? Oh, for... that's the pier watchman. He's the one spreading the story. A couple of bums, I guess. I don't know. My old deck watch was sound asleep, of course. You didn't see it? No. Yeah, I, I don't know. Woke me up. I yelled, shut up out of my porthole, went back to sleep. Ah, hello, the skip away. I'm so glad to catch you. Huh? Oh, what now? A sailor comes ashore again. I'm just going to take a minute. It's about a woman, you see. Oh, that I see, and uh, oh, so nice. But get, uh, right now, I want get to... Get what I mean, Doc Loaf was all trying to sell something. Now it's telephone numbers. Go on, Baldy, get out of here. Wait a minute, I've seen this guy before. Yeah? Well, it's not mutual. Skip, if you just listen His to His name's me... Salvori, I'll tell you. Yeah, I've seen him in lineups. 
Are you around here last night? I beg your pardon. Oh, it's a great neighborhood. Salvori, the big operator. Last trip he was here selling raffle tickets for a three-wheeled automobile. Oh, but escape a list. Thanksgiving, listening. they say. Well, thanks and good night. You press to him. I'm going backwards. Yeah. Hey. Look at that, would you? Is that what you want to see us about, Salvori? That crowd down at the pier? Something's happening. No. no, 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 no. I got no deal to make. Come on, let's take a look. Uh, uh, afternoon, friends. What's going on? Uh, uh, don't suppose you have 50 cents or so. See, uh, an old pal of mine. See, he was going to buy me Thanksgiving dinner, you Never see. Never mind but... that. What are those men doing down by the water? Uh, uh, fishing, son. 50 cents is about all it would take, though, you see. Now, this old pal of mine, he would have spent five bucks, you know. Mince pie and the works, you know. Said so last night. Hey! Hey, down there! Hey, you! Now, listen, Buster, did you say last night? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Hey, sailor! Now, yeah, now, it seems to me that... Hey, look out there! Salvori! Well, he left in a hurry, didn't he? Body, skipper! Got a body! What? Just fishing him out. Guy floating with a knife in him. Guy float. Yeah, with a knife. Holy smoke. Yeah, you see, that's what I tell you. You see, a, a pal of mine, he was going to buy me a Thanksgiving dinner, see? Only instead, it looks like he got in a fight about 3 a.m. last night, I figure. Yeah, got murdered, see? Uh, so, uh, tell me, how's about the 50 cents? We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. When new RPM motor oil was developed in the laboratory, it was subjected to the most rigidly controlled tests that modern research could devise, and it proved tops, the oil that doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. The next question was, would it live up to these tests in your car? Tonight, you'll hear the answer from the crews of two actual test cars in the heart of downtown San Francisco. Following is a special transcription made during the road test period. We switch you to test unit number one and research supervisor Carl Watson in San Francisco. We are making rather slow progress heading west along Market Street. Test unit number two is behind us in the traffic. We're driving under the same kind of stop and go conditions that you do, the toughest kind on engine wear. It's our job to see if new RPM will back up our laboratory findings. I'll switch you now to research engineer Bob Birchall in unit number two. He'll tell you about these special cars and the data we are recording from the instruments. Go ahead, Bob. This is Bob Birchall. The engines in this test car and test unit number one ahead of us are both equipped with irradiated piston rings, just like those in our laboratory test engine. They also have Geiger counters attached so that we can hear and record where as it actually takes place. We are making a comparison test. Test unit one is using new RPM, but in this car, we have a well-known conventional oil in the crankcase. It is one of the best premium type oils. Naturally, I can't reveal its brand name. Now, I'll hold the microphone closer to the Geiger counter which detects minute particles of metal as they wear off the irradiated piston ring. Hear that rapid clicking? That means a comparatively high rate of engine wear. Now I'll switch you back to Carl Watson for a comparison with new RPM motor oil. Let me number one. This is Watson again. You hear that slow click of the Geiger counter? That is an outstanding low wear rate count. It's new RPM under the same condition type oil you heard about a moment ago. Day in and day out, mile after mile, the counters have clicked off the same story. The results we got in the laboratory tests on new RPM motor oil are checking out on the road. Proved in the laboratory, supported in severe road service, that's new RPM motor oil. The oil that cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Try it. Sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean 
We take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine, a boy ten years old who's been scared to death, who either can't or won't talk, well, if your name is George Valentine, you begin to understand the reason when you see the neighborhood in which he was picked up by the police. You understand a good deal more when you see that the body of a man has been fished out of the water off the pier. Yes, now it's certainly a case for Lieutenant Riley. Oh, but what a case. They don't get solved around here, my friend. They just happen. Okay, Riley. Did your boys pick up that bomb, the guy who sniffed... Oh, he won't know anything. Nobody does... The name of the corpse is Lefty Sims. Well, you seem to know something. Well, everybody knew him. He's a common thief, that's all. A few big jobs, but nothing to steal down here. He usually worked the city. This wasn't his territory. Your doc says the time's about right. Been dead since last night, around three or four, maybe. Killed and then tossed in the water. What about the pier watchman? He must He have... covers five warehouses. How could he see anything? And everybody off duty for the holiday. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Riley, what's this stuff? Where the fight happened? It's a spot of blood, I figure. No, no, look, look closer. Hmm? Powder. Little pieces of broken glass. What? Hey, here's some more of it. Yeah. Oh, doctor. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, doc, come over here, will you? Yeah, sure, Lieutenant. You thinking what I am, Riley? Yeah. What is it? Hey, uh, here, uh, take a look. White powder. And on a pier where boats... Uh-uh. No, it's not. Huh? Talking about dope, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. False alarm, huh, Doc? Well, it might explain why there was a fight, what was going on out here. Something of value. Yes, yes, of course. Smuggling, you think, huh? Peddling? Or... Yes, I'll uh, I'll do the thinking, Doc. Yeah. You Oral just tell me. Oh, Myerson, perhaps. You know, something like that. I can run a test. Oral oh, Myerson. It's valuable. Yeah, didn't I say that? Drug. Drug of some kind. Cure people instead of making them sick. Worth a lot more than dope, too. Easier to market. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Only more in the big time. Did that watchman say there were any kids on the pier last night? Hmm? Valentine, I'm trying to get the doc here to talk English. Did the watchman see any kids? No. Okay, so long. Wish I could help you, Miss Brooks. It's all right, Mr. Murphy. Come on, Sonny. The settlement house here is pretty badly undermanned. A cleaning woman will be back tomorrow. She might know something about the bar here. But in this neighborhood... Well, thanks again. Come on, Sonny. Car is parked over this way. Boxy! Well, it's about time Come on, got... get out of the street, you and the kid. What? Never mind any place. Here, duck in the alley. What? In this neighborhood, Angel, I don't want to... Who was that? I don't know. Packing crate. She can't see. He's gone now. George, what's happened? What's going on? Simple, Brooksy. Nice, simple case. My guess is the kid here was an eyewitness to murder. It'll be a simple case if he isn't murdered. Oh, kid, please talk. Please tell me, will you? What did you see last night? Look, nobody's going to hurt you. I won't let him. But you, you must have seen things like this plenty of times before, kid. I, I don't mean murder, but you grew up in a tough place. And you're not going to do anybody any good if you just... Yes, he just cries. George, I'm taking him home. You can solve your own fancy waterfront murders. Okay, I'll leave him alone. But which one are you covering for, kid? Only a few men around that pier last night. Which one is that important to you? All right, maybe you've given me the answer at that, without talking. Ah, says you. You admitted you saw your old pal Lefty, didn't you, before he was murdered? I tell Come you... Come on, Riley, along the deck here. Now, look, I, pro I promised me a nice Thanksgiving uh, dinner, you see, Lefty did, see? Came past walking up to the pier and never come back. But didn't he say who he was coming out to meet? Didn't he? Here we are, Riley. Let's go in here. 
Hey, Skipper, this your cabin? What? Oh, no, no, mine's forward ways. It's all right, the owner's cabin. Nobody ever uses it. Just want a place to talk. All right, you all I'm going to say. Come on, you too, Skipper. Uh, the name is Stogue, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, wait a minute, here's the other one. Bring him in here, Sergeant. Uh, let go of him. Let go. Mr. Salvori, now I have to stand rats on my ship, eh? Huh? Picked him up in the neighborhood, Skipper. That's all for now, Sergeant. What about the kid, Valentine? Oh, he's all right, Riley. I, uh, I left him in my car out on the street. Uh, so because my name is Salvori, Shut you up. think... You were around here last night, too, weren't you? Ah, always around. That's dock loafers with deals. Yeah, but don't try to cover up so much, Skipper. What? Now, listen, all of you. We can't find anybody else with a chance of being out here last night but you three. I was on my ship. Talk to this peddler. I Mr. said don't cover so much. Salvori's a friend of yours. Uh, sure, sure. Everybody's a Salvori's friend. Except the law. Now, look, this is a smuggle case. A what? Not on my ship. I've never brought it. Any... Lefty, the man who was killed, knew his way around the city. Salvori, you're the big waterfront middleman. And, Captain, you've got a boat. <laughs> See what I mean? Cops, they got brains. Enough to spot an ideal setup for smuggling. Captain Stogue, you bring it in. Salvori picks it up, gets it through customs, and Lefty fitted in someplace in the city. I think you're crazy. Somebody was waiting a little while ago to waylay Miss Brooks and a kid who was an eyewitness. Brooks? Brooks? Skipper, you're too fat to run down an alley like he did. Sure, I heard his steps. Sniffy just shuffles. So tag, Salvori, you're it. Because now I know why you ran the first time when we saw the body. It's what proves you guys work together. Now I know you crazy. Because on the pier earlier, you came up yelling to the skipper something about a woman. Well, the woman must have been Miss Brooks. You'd seen her with a boy. The witness the two of you have been trying to find. Sure, Skipper, you were looking for boys when I first met you, too, weren't you? My cigars. That's all my cigars. Never mind, Salvori. The kid out there is going to give us the whole story, and a lot straighter than you ever would. Because I finally figured out his whole story. i never been mixed up in an smuggle. Sure, and never in a fight or used a knife. Why did you do it? Lefty, try a double cross on you, too? You're under arrest for murder, Savori. Come on, I'll take him out for you, Riley. Uh, let go. You take the other two. <laughs> but, but I'm not mixed up in this. Material witness and accessory for you, Captain. No, please, please, no. Come on, come on, out the door. Meet you on the pier, Riley. Hey, you, Salvori, wait a second. Uh, nobody's going to rest. Salvori! Grab him, you idiot! Hold him! Come on, there he goes, down the plank. Yeah, uh, headed farther up on the pier, up toward the warehouse. Salvori! Do you think the sergeant saw him? Yeah, sure, sure, he'll get him all right. Well, that was a nice act. Yeah, good idea. Now, come on. Car's back the other way. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you notice that empty cabin on the ship? Yeah. Grease stains on the pillow? Yeah, empty, huh? I'll bet Salvori's even been traveling with the skipper. Sure, it's a smuggling ring, all right. Still confused, aren't you, Riley? Huh? Oh, it was originally a smuggle, sure. But never mind. You'll never prove anything on this bunch unless you catch him in the act. And, Riley, we're going to do just that. Well, it's the only car in the street. Uh -huh. We're close enough. But it's been five minutes already, Valentine. If this hunch of yours is going to pay off, it better start. Gotta give us time to run the other way, hasn't he? Uh, I don't see how you can... Oh, no. I didn't expect a gun. Come on. Come on around the side of the building. That's my car, Riley. I hope somebody's going to pay for it. Hold it. Hold it. There he is. You're wasting your time, Skipper. The car is empty. You hear me? The kid's uptown. It was a trap, Skipper. The only one who'd stick his neck into our trap is the one who did the stabbing, right? The one who has to get rid of the kid, the witness. So we don't even need to ask the kid now, do we? Look out! I got him! Hospital, George. He says he'll get his confession from Captain Stogar. Right? Shh, shh. Keep it down, will you? Hmm? The kid's in there. I'm trying out a system. We write each other notes. 
What about the smuggle stuff, those drugs? They searched the ship yet? Yes, they've already found some drugs hidden, but uh, I don't understand. What did you say, writing notes? What don't you understand? How the smuggle worked? With a thief, a middleman, and a skipper involved? With drugs that couldn't be sold in this country except through the proper channels? But would sell for a fortune in Europe or on the black market? Oh, you mean it was to be smuggled out of the country? Mm -hmm, That's right, Brooksy. And Lefty, the guy who was killed, stole the drugs and delivered them last night. But he got a knife instead of a payoff. And the kid saw it. George, you mean the boy talked? He's all right? I guess he will be. See, I was afraid he was, well, maybe the skipper's son or something. Yeah, I know. That psychic shock, his refusal to talk. But he's not. He's only known him for a few weeks. Kid didn't even know where he fitted into the plan until a few days ago. Oh, George, for heaven's sake. See, he doesn't have any parents, Brooksy. Just a waterfront kid. But not nearly as tough as he acts. What's missing in the smuggle setup? There's customs on the other side, you know. Who gets the goods into the other country off the ship? The boy? You mean he was a part of it? Nobody can stop him all over the world. Up and down like monkeys. (laughs) Perfect, isn't it? Yeah. If you'd been with me, you should have noticed. Empty cabin on the ship with grease stains on a pillow. But Salvori is bald. (laughs) We'd better buy some shampoo for that kid, by the way. He was aboard that ship. Yeah, he saw the captain go ashore to meet Salvori and Lefty. Saw the murder. Then he broke out and got away. George, let me talk to him. This ridiculous business of writing notes... Oh, sure, he'll talk now. Just been scared to death, that's all. All he wanted was to be happy. He was expecting to be happier than he'd ever been before. George, if you don't stop playing clairvoyant... Well, the captain's the only one who could have brought the kid. Therefore, made him afraid, made him run ashore. Therefore, Brooksy, the skipper was it. Well, don't you remember how the kid reacted when I asked him to go to a football game, just puzzled? George, he is writing. Sure, sure he is. Gives me more time to look the words up in the dictionary. Hello, mademoiselle. Oh! (laughs) Sure, Angel, that's why I wouldn't talk before. He wants to stay in this country. Afraid we'd find him out. He's from Marseille. He's French. Uh, Oui, Marseille. Mais j'aime l'Amérique. Et monsieur, il dit que... Hey! (laughs) French. Uh, Here, give me the pencil. And the dictionary. You think you could stand a turkey dinner, George? Turkey? (laughs) We. You see? One language. I guess it is Thanksgiving, isn't it? And now we got a pilgrim on our hands, Angel. A hungry little pilgrim. Tonight, earlier in the program, you heard how road tests jibed with laboratory results in the development of new RPM motor oil. You have been taken step by step along the path followed by our scientists in bringing you this new oil years ahead of its time. From the first survey to determine what the ideal motor oil should be through the ultimate proof in an automobile engine, you've heard the new RPM story firsthand. Now discover it yourself, firsthand. It's sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer is Lieutenant Riley. Alan Reed was heard as Stogue. Dick Ryan as Sniffy. Anthony Barrett as Salvori. Jeffrey Silver as Shorty and Stephen Chase as the doctor. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Your community chest helps care for homeless and neglected children in your own neighborhood. Community Chest Child Care Centers operate year-round. 
This year, make sure you give enough to your community chest to help all year. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Thank you.